<laughs> and John, yes. Paul, and Marshall are here. Rick and Philip are not here. And we also have Council uh, Liaison Sean McCoy here as well. Roll call, please. Um, motion to approve the agenda. I make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Aye. Approval agenda complete. Uh, approval of previous month's minutes from January 22nd. Two, two minor corrections, I think, Dan. Okay. Uh, on the first page, on the Gulf Professionals Report, I think the second column is 2023 rounds, not revenues. And item D, just talking about here, the, the second column should be rounds, not revenues. Yeah, it's not a dollar. It's not a dollar number. It's a Good. It's number of rounds. Yep. And then on item D, uh, I think <clears throat> the meeting was delayed until I think that Monday was the twenty sixth, not the twenty second. Minor changes, but in yeah, the interest exactly. of that receipt, exactly. I think that ought to be delayed. Was item three? Item D. D. Item D would have been Monday for the So can we have a motion to make the corrections? I have a motion to make the corrections. I move that the notice be approved as correct. I'll favor.
year to date, we are at uh, 475,000, which is 102,000 we had the prior years. Uh, now we're up 2,457. I did run the numbers. Is Maine looking that same field ball too? Maine's looking great. I ran the numbers through yesterday. Uh, we're about <coughs> 24,000 ahead of your, a month to date. So, yeah, it's going very good. Um, anyway, any questions to you agree? Thank you. All right, for uh, sunset, uh, year to date uh, revenue, 153,144, about 30,000 uh, ahead of your prior. And then uh, rounds, we are. Um, about 2,066 ahead last year uh, in rounds. Um, yeah, same thing. It's it's just it's, it's great. It's it's so it's so busy. It's it's, it's fun. <laughs> it's actually days go by too quick. It feels like sometimes not enough hours in the day. Is so I haven't I haven't been in town. Is it the weather <clears throat> too? Um, I mean, last, uh, if you look at last month for Sunset, I was actually down uh, from year prior. Uh, I was also closed one extra day from last year. And if you average that out, it's 125 rounds uh, per day at 25 days open. Um, so if I was open one more day, I would have exceeded last year's rounds for that month. And that's the revenue a little bit uh, ahead of last, last year. Um, for that month as well, but yes, it's 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 hundred percent better. Uh, I'll be honest, uh, and I don't know if Sam would agree, but uh, at least so far this first beginning of this month, the weather pattern was weird. It's like a cold wind, the wind we get in in cloudy days. It's not the normal kind of May warm winds that start to bring the warm temps in for May, June, July. It was kind of cold for a few of those days. That, that, I think that, that hurt it, but you are still ahead of the last, the last May. It's last year we had all that rain, though. That's true, yeah. That's, that's true. true. Yeah, that's true. Especially when we open. Oh, the looks, we were, you had to close January, February, and February, and February, and February. And that's another reason. Yeah, two yeah. years ahead is probably. Yeah, two years in a row. Two years in a row, we lost January, February. Yeah. We went 1,500 rounds at sunset for those two months. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's killer. No, it is 100. And the, the short hours that we have on those days. Well, yeah. I mean, I <laughs> you're, you only have to play each base. Yeah, your base will go solid on the day, and it's like, well, you know, the short hours that we offer. But it's it's going really good. Horses and the past greens. Uh, I heard that you were phenomenal over the weekend. It's really good. Uh, the sunset, I know, is phenomenal. Uh, <coughs> same thing with here. They're fast. And all three golf courses are fast. And I personally love it. Alright, so. So I have just a couple of things I'd like to, to say during this part, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, first off, I'd like to introduce Ben Wagner. Ben is the recreation and golf superintendent. And you're going to start seeing him around a little bit more. Uh, as uh, Ben takes on his full role, uh, not just uh, recreation, but uh, uh, starting to see more in, in the golf world as, as well. Hi, everybody. Hello. So, are you over all of Longwood's recreation? Mm -hmm. the okay. Yeah, I you know, look forward to starting to grow in this fall for the next, for the next year. That's some big things of recreation last year. That's really cool. We had direction. I look forward to this and uh, getting to know all of you. So, thank you for having me. Um, and I am a golfer. <laughs> Good. These hard questions. And then the other thing there is an envelope uh, uh, at each one of your places. Uh, this, the city had provided some passes for you all, thanking you for your service on the board. And, and uh, again, I would like to echo that. Thank you for. Of your time to uh, put in with the uh, <coughs> golf uh, advisory board. Thank you. 
So, old business. Um, motion to approve the 2024 agenda calendar items. Did anybody have any comments or questions? I think this is kind of a good summary of what we reviewed in January when we met. Well, I make a motion to make the agenda as written. Any second? Second. Uh, All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, motion carried. <clears throat> then new business. Yay, Jeff, I get to pass it over to you. Yes. <laughs> <Okay>. so, <laughs> so, Ben is going to uh, first cover uh, Ukraine's uh, bond projects. And then I'll talk a little bit uh, about uh, uh, Twin Peaks. All right, so I did a PowerPoint for everybody here, and it started out from day one when we uh, first started the whole project, leveling it to, it's, it, was for, it was for last month, so there's a lot that's happened, which I'll be glad to share next time, but it takes us up to about, about a month ago, so I'll just go through. I got a lot of pictures, and I'll just talk pretty quickly about them. If you guys have any questions about any part of it, go ahead, feel free to ask, and uh, I'd love to tell you about it. So, out with the old. So you'll see one of our neighbors got us this picture from his roof. We didn't get like a really good before picture. So that's kind of up there. That's where we had all our stuff. Kind of our east side of our lot here. And then this is where we were in and out every day. So, so keep these pictures in your head and you'll see a drastic transformation. This was inside of our, our house there. It looks worse than it was because this is on our moving day <laughs> when we were moving out, so it wasn't really this messy. It's but just like I remember. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Maybe some of the time. It looks loved it. Yeah, yeah that's, 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 that's how you was when you did not know you were coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, so this is the room where we would meet every morning. You see our job board here. This was our break room where we do safety meetings, guys would have lunch. And then this was, the one over there was our office area, so that's where we'd have our a desk, and mine was on the other side over there, and then there was one more around the corner in there. That was the old like living room area. There was a fireplace, all that. And <laughs> so, so yeah, that was the, there. So this is when we started our asbestos removal. This is the part that slowed us down about a month and a half, something like that. So we started on 11-3. We, we were supposed to start on like the end of September, and the asbestos removal company lost their license, this and that, they went back and forth. They let it expire, is what happened, and then they didn't renew it. So the day they actually started was 11-3. So you see, they showed up. They have to um, put this plastic around. Nothing can go in there. This was after they ripped everything out of there. Um, this was where the kitchen was. So there used to be a sink, and an island right here, so they, they take it down to pretty much nothing before they go in there and actually start to remove the asbestos. So this is what it looks like. We were able to go in there after they were done and they got everything out. They took it up, as you can see, down to the studs. There was no dust, there was no dirt. They completely gutted everything that was in there. So this area, this room back here was the old break room and that was a restroom and this Gosh, and, oh, this was the break room too. This is facing the other way out there. So that's the door going out. But you can see when they built this old house, or when they added on to the old house, they just kind of left the old walls and just kind of built on the outside of it. So what part of the house actually had this was it? All of it. Any, any part that they had, like tile, all the glue had it, all the tile had it. Um, the ceiling, yep, the popcorn ceilings had it. So when they got into the kitchen, they, it was a raised kitchen, and we didn't realize that when they went, so then they found different levels. So then it had, took longer as they found different levels of it. So, so once they finished up, we opened it up to the fire department for them to do some training. So you'll see they kind of did their thing. They put a bunch of holes in the wall. They cut holes in the roof for areas that they would enter. They, there's, there's definitely areas they want to cut. They try to go in between the studs 
up there, so they were practicing that up there. Um, I got a quick video. Uh, if I know how to start it, I probably have to have a mouse. Okay. Um, sorry, I'll play it next time. Anybody know how I would play it? Right click? You have to hold it down. Oh. It right. Oh. Okay. No. You should be. Oh, there it goes. So, this is what they do going into a fire. <clears throat> they make fake smoke. They, they fill this whole house with fake smoke, and you'll see it starting to come out. You can kind of see it right there. Yeah, there you go. It wasn't just one group, there were multiple. Yeah, yeah. These guys, this crew came one day, and then a, when they, the next crew came on, and they do their four or five days, they came on the next day and cut holes and did all their stuff. It was like a Sunday when they came back. Kind of a video of, of kind of what they go through and, and then they kind of clear it out. But <laughs> yeah, so here's the damage they did. They cut doors, they just really work on real life stuff and set it up their training facility. Um, and then comes the, de the demolition on, on 12 12. They did they, this, is all the piles of the house, the lean to that was there. The only bad part about it is they didn't even tell us when they started to tear it down. So we've been in that place 25 years when our mechanic was driving out to Sandstone where he works for me. He said, hey, they flattened the house already. I was like, you got to be kidding. The one thing I wanted to see would go down and didn't get to quite see it. So so that's what that is. They, and then they cleared the site, leveled the site. And then 1220, we started digging footers. These are all the footers that they're digging. This is for the maintenance building, the one that's on the west side. <clears throat> and then concrete goes into the footers. You don't realize how big they are until you see them here. And this is all underground now. So, so yeah, these are probably, I think this is seven by four. And then all the rebar, all the math those guys have to do to get all that stuff in the right spot. <clears throat> A few more, you can see all the rebar in the walls here, so this, this building is very stout. Um, underground utilities, this is the sewer stuff that this will go into the building. This one's going into the building also. All these are down in the south end of our facility. Um, then the water, this goes all the way out to Aerial Court, out to the east, and then connects to where they stubbed it out for whatever development came, came next. So you can see those are about 15 feet deep into the ground. And then this is all the plumbing. So once again, a lot of math, all these guys have to get it all in the right spots. And uh, sometimes they miss as we found it out earlier, or later, I guess. <laughs> so the first slab we poured here, this is the slab of the maintenance building. You'll see all the, all the rebar in there, the plastic coating they put under the dirt. And of course it started to rain this day. So these guys, they worked through it and they did a, a heck of a job, but we were uh, a little nervous about it, but it actually came out really good. So there's the slab of our maintenance building there. Um, this was a big one for us to be able to keep our facility, or for us to keep going. We were able to get our fuel hooked up down there. So all winter we had to go to Twin Peaks or Sunset and fill up gas cans and come back and forth. Luckily, you know, December through March-ish, so we're not too busy, so we didn't have to go too often, but getting this hooked up, we're able to drive up here and, and fuel up and make it a little bit more efficient. So, so here the structure starts to go up on March 18th. Um, <clears throat> this is the structure to the maintenance building. This is taken from the, the south side looking north. Um, right there, this is from the um, east looking west. You can see the mountains back there and 
And then that's the same thing looking <clears throat> to the north. And then here's our material storage bin. So we have four bins here that we'll be able to put a couple types of sand, pea gravel, and then maybe some waste off the course or topsoil, whatever we're needing at that time. It'll all stay contained in these bins as before. We just had piles laid out there and the wind would blow it. And we could never get down to the bottom because if you get down the bottom and you're scooping up rocks and gravel and all that. So you're always wasting about six inches of each pile you get. So now we're way more efficient be able to uh, to use all we buy so but you'll see the footers for all these that they poured once again very very huge very well built um, and it's going to be awesome so now they're starting to uh, put up the walls this, they call this the skyliner that they put in here they put this there so they can put the insulation on top of that and then you can see here they're, they're putting the insulation here and they put the panels on the roof and uh, away we go. So that's a short version. Like I said, there's a, a lot more that's happened in the last, I guess it's almost been two months now. So yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're moving along. Still. Uh, why, why don't you just describe where, where you're at? Is, I mean, you're starting to build walls. Of, oh yeah, inside the uh, maintenance building, they pretty much got the whole thing framed out. So they got the frames. The wall frames of all the offices, the break room, in the mechanics area we have a, two bathrooms there. He has a grinding room, parts room, and office, and then we have a little compressor room in there. So, so yeah, everything's formed. They should start doing drywall next week. Start putting all that up so we can really see the rooms, and then they've got everything graded in the middle. We're supposed to we're supposed to start asphalting today, but he didn't want to start doing you know, maybe all the rain coming. So probably Wednesday or Thursday we'll start to the asphalt and, and yeah, it's it's coming. <laughs> the equipment building's got three sides all together and they're starting to work on the front. So that one will go a lot faster because there's not as much detail on the inside as the as the maintenance building. So we got a funny question. <clears throat> How did you determine the size? Um we, we went and looked at a bunch of, well, two or three different facilities, and we kind of really liked the way the one at TBC looks up there, TBC Colorado, and we kind of went off of what they had, their size, and we, our architects did use some measurements, you know, for our equipment building, how we're going to fit all the stuff inside, and, and then, you know, it all ultimately came down to the dollar, you know, yeah, right. if it was up to me, I would have built it. <laughs> About 10,000 square feet. Yeah, building lost two or three holes. <laughs> yeah. Four T would have been a par three. <laughs> when do you expect to be in there? Hopefully mid August, early September. So, according to the contract, they have to be substantially complete by August 16th before they start uh, getting liquidated damages. So, they are. Moving pretty fast, and considering you know some of the stops and goes that we've had, which are pretty common, you know some of the steel didn't arrive on time, and so that put us behind. And then some of those heavy snows and rains made it very difficult with how muddy the site was. Um, but like Dan said, with the asphalt coming in, uh, <coughs> really shouldn't be any more weather days because. Pretty much everything will be indoors you know, here, here shortly. So, and and what what we'll do is once we're up and running and everything set, we'll probably move one of the meetings out there so you all have an opportunity to go. Across and yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, nice little break. I mean, it's not huge or anything. It's about half this size, but it'll be enough for all of us to get in there, and then we can tour it. You know, I'll tell everybody, show everybody the new digs. Any other questions? I like to talk about it. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then I just want to give a kind of a quick update about the irrigation uh, project here. Um, Ryan, I gave the night off because he he's been working some pretty lengthy uh, hours trying to get water going back for. The course, and if you've been golfing here, you'll see that it's kind of dry on the 
the back nine, but uh, I was here, it was about 1, 1 15 this afternoon, and there was actually water spraying on that end. Still got a few weeks that they have to address beforehand, but uh, we're getting really close, uh, which means the front nine is, is virtually done. All they have left to do is to go back in and patch up and reseed in the, in the areas where they dug up. Uh, and then the company will leave a crew here during the summer to uh, do work on that sod and seeding and some smaller things. And then they'll return sometime uh, mid to late September and really start uh, working on the, the back nine to be able to be completely done by the end of the year. And we really didn't want them working during the summer months. Uh, they, you know, if you've been out here at all, it's been difficult at times because they've really been trying to get some things wrapped up and, and, and then the other thing is that we had uh, really one change order, uh, and that was to dredge the ponds, and that was about $250,000 to do the two ponds. And that was going to be way higher because originally we wanted to move the materials from the golf course, and uh, of course we didn't have enough money or resources to do that. So we found areas to uh, fill in, leave the materials here, and then uh, they will reshape uh, those areas where they, they dumped all the, the stuff, the dredging materials. They'll do that uh, kind of the last thing. And we feel like it will it'll add some character to the golf course as, as well. Uh, but you know, there, there are places where the, the ponds were only a foot deep and we needed at least three to be able to carry the amount of water. The, the lake to the east is much deeper than the <coughs> one to the west, but uh, they, they seem very uh, happy with the amount of water that uh, we're able to hold now and we're really headed in, in a good direction. Each one of the heads out on the golf course will ultimately be able to be program individually so if you're getting some water too much water in one area you can turn that head down and if you're not getting enough uh, water in another area you'll be able to turn it turn it up the other thing that would be really big here is to be able to water the greens and the mounds we only had one head so to get enough water on the greens it always uh, overwatered the, the, the mounds around the Green, so you have really wet areas at the bottom of, of the green areas, and we believe that will be a, a big change that uh, will really improve the experience for, for the golfers here. Uh, Ryan will be back next next time we meet, and he will have a, a PowerPoint much like what uh, Dan had uh, done tonight. But again, he, he, uh, he had a pretty rough uh, weekend trying to uh, fix fix uh, <clears throat> leaks and then some of the heads got turned the wrong way and we were spraying some of the neighbor's houses so uh, he was having to do some damage control with the neighbors. Uh, I will tell you that those were, were not city staff's problems or, or fault. Uh, the company had originally gone in along number two and set all of those heads and what happened was as a part of, of turning on the system they had to remove some of the insides of the heads to be able to flush all the junk out of the uh, system so that we weren't putting all that uh, into the new pumps and motors and when they put them back in the club didn't adjust them for the direction they were supposed to go so we had four heads on friday night that no, I, I, I think we we're fortunate that they weren't set to run a long time. Uh, Ryan did a great job working with one of the neighbors that uh, um, went over and he had some 
uh, wood in his backyard that uh, he was building a, a back porch and helped him spread the wood out to get it to dry out. But uh, things ultimately will, will be okay. And he's gone over and verified that those are all set to for recognition. I can't can't thank uh, Dan and and Ryan enough for the work. It's you know it's it's hard enough to be doing your real job, but also having to do some pretty significant uh, projects on top of that. Uh, and, and then also we have Sharice Montgomery at U Creek, who is a project manager for the city, and she's doing a lot of support uh, and manage that project. Ryan is doing all of it on his own. <coughs> So, uh, again, thank you to, to Dan and Ryan. More, we'll have more uh, pictures, and we're getting really close. So, uh, uh, we said you Creek uh, next time. We meet. I think the, the last time I played here was about a week ago. The ponds were dry. I don't know if they are right now. No, they're full. But there must have been hundreds of Did anybody go out there and clean that all up or not? No, no, there are two. No, I don't know if that is kind of point to take them out of there. There's, no, there are wherever they got dumped if you want to go dig through them. No, 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 reform the areas because they're still so wet and mucky that you wouldn't want to go into there. It's just all silt <laughs> muck. And it, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sure some of them are mine. More than some. I used to go out and, and have like a, a roller. I mean, when I used to work here for Sam, when Sam was here when I was in high school, I remember seeing the guys with carts and this, like a when you see the ball pick on range, a giant version of that just goes in the water and it goes back and forth. It's essentially the same thing, but there's companies that come out that usually. This, you, you, you don't want most of the ones that they dug out. It's just funny to see them all, you know? And it wasn't even one spot. There was just that. They were just all over the place. Stand for one out there. There's not one. So the next item is discuss survey and potential questions. One of the things that the board had discussed at the January meeting was uh, considering doing some type of survey in your packet. And then at uh, your spot uh, this evening, we had some sample survey questions. Wanted to see, number one, what you really want to um, hear from the golfers, and number two, if any of these questions uh, would work for you, or if you have suggestions, or you want us to go back and bring you some more next time. Another thing I have is number three, it says on a scale of one to 10, <coughs> how would you rate the course maintenance? Is 10 good or bad? I'm, we'll get to that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, usually yeah. you are going to put it in the best. Yeah, like and, and these are just for discussion. I They're not even in... correct. That's not the correct. And, I, and the one thing I would say is, I don't know that we want to do too many questions because if we have too many, nobody's going to take the time. So maybe maybe we do multiple sets where um, throughout the, the first part of the summer, we ask a, a set of five questions, and maybe the, the last half of the summer, we do another five. <coughs> I, on, on two and uh, on six, what I would probably do is uh, is talk about uh, maybe get it so that they can hit you know maybe a couple of them, like is it the uh, uh, quality of the green or some other thing like that. Don't make them have to, to write it out. Make the uh, you know go through what you know are the things that people typically yeah uh, they make them make yeah them make and they, they can they can pick three whatever and then on six the same thing kind of the same thing. Uh, it just seems to me that, that that you'll get people to fill the survey out if you don't, if you, if I'm a teacher and with teachers, teachers were always like, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they, so then if you have to type, uh, if you have to type out your answer, uh, or write out your answer, you 
probably not going to get uh, uh, people to finish it. And so I just think that, that you know, my experience with students and, the, and with uh, adults is just better to, better to have. You don't want to lead them, but you also want to give them uh, uh, things that you know are the things that people are going to say uh, over the course of this, you know, what, what would be related here. They're, are they going to talk about, well, I think the beards are great. It's, uh, <laughs> those are not, the, that's not a deciding of the picture. Um, but uh, those, are the, those are the things that people, I think, like to, uh, they're going to steer towards, you know, the, the availability of, of uh, you know, the driving range availability of the putting uh, range. That sort of thing seems to be the sort of thing that people are looking for. The same thing would be true with respect to <laughs> questions 11 and 12. I mean, It says, what were the strong points, yeah. what were the weak points in the course? Yes. Right. Yeah, one I kind of came up with was, why did you choose playing this course? And like uh, we're saying, is I had A, price, B, location, C, amenities, D, course points. Yeah, those types of things would make perfect sense. Right, so you got four choices and, and pick those, something, yeah. whatever, you're giving them an option, and you're starting to see why people come to play. Rather than get a smattering of any answer, because then you now have no way to really quantify why they would come. You want to limit your options, and more than likely, one of those four or some four choices are going to be what you're going to pick in your negative percentage as to what people are showing up. Well, you'll also be able to tell if you by great help, you'll also be able to tell maybe who did uh, answer and said. Definitely send it for them again to get them. I uh, mean, get them to fill the second part that you said. The other thing I have is going to make it, I think, a lot shorter. Yeah, yeah. You know, four or five questions at best. Yeah. What do you expect to learn from the question, how was the weather on the day you played? I'm just giving samples. I didn't, I'm not right. really saying. I, I, so I mean, I'm not sure what that would, what information that would provide for that. It could enjoy the, the enjoyability day now, of course, because if you had a really cold and windy day, you're more likely to not give very good answers Thank compared you. to a nice 70 degree, beautiful sunshiny day. Yeah, yeah, you're not too, too hot or anything like right, that. Right, because yeah. that's going to dictate conditions, how people play and how they have to dress, how their Pace comfort, play piece of play, there's a lot of things that come into it. Yes. So I was going to say, I would leave off the question of how you feel about pace of play, because everybody's going to have a different opinion depending on how that day went out there. And I mean, that's we've already had that discussion with the marshallers. And, okay. well, but, I'll be honest, I, I mentioned some of this kind of, that kind of stuff up at our meetings, mm -hmm. and you know, it's, it's all about constructive criticism, too. You know, we don't want all positive. We might get it, but we'll take the construction criticism and we'll work through and see what we can do better. You need to know if it's yeah. if the pace of play isn't there, mm -hmm. and that's one reason somebody might say they don't want to come back. Uh, so yesterday I was at Fox helping out the scoring for a little bit because they asked me to come by, and I'm sitting there, and one of the members came in, I was up behind the front counter, and he's like, man. It's an eye-opening experience having five and a half hour out of Fox Hill. It's usually a Fox. It's very. You know, it's three and a half. Yeah. I was a member there for four yeah. years. And when no, I was three and a half. Three and a half is an 18. And it's long and that you're on the course too long. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. the members yeah. pace themselves at that point. When I worked there, no way for very It's the same way. If you're playing four hours to 415, you've got guys that are. You better get them off the course. Yeah. Yeah. Private clubs are really different. Totally, it's like this well, yeah. is like, because, because they don't go off of a team time right. sheet for the most part. That where they're got it because they're getting the money every month in <laughs> yeah. monthly right. fees. So it's not a revenue driven. How Correct. much can we fill the T sheet? It's we are getting our money, our money, our money 
every month because they're paying four hundred and twenty dollars a month to play the course. And totally that, and that, also the public course you have <clears throat> you have players from all of those correct mm -hmm. which you do the country club as well yes. but there's still an expectation. Mm -hmm. We get brand new offers in the game and yeah, five dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So they've paid their seventy plus dollars and they, they want to be out there as long as they want compared to somebody that's a good golfer that's pushing them the whole time. Well, I mean, and, and if you were holding things up, you would let people just go through because there's always caps. It's not like it's back to back to back in, in the private sector yeah. compared to, to in the, on the public courses. Yeah. Most time you don't get an option to say, go ahead and play through because there's another game right behind and another one and another one and another one. Yeah. So yeah, most players awesome. know the authentic too, and know the way that the group through. But it doesn't matter because they're going to hold the next group up, and that. So again, it's a difference of, and and I've been a marshal at sunset, and I've seen it where yes, it doesn't matter how much you want to try and push somebody, they don't care. I paid my seventy dollars, and I'm going to take my time, and it doesn't matter. And you are not going to make me change. Period. And three and a half dollars, that's no fun either. <laughs> that's I don't that that's true. You got four guys, it's like, it you'd be, be surprised if you be four you know, they they most of those guys, guys because they know that course inside and out, and they're playing side money games and everything else. They're playing, and they don't even line up with some of these guys. It's like, it's, like it's, <clears throat> it's all about how fast that I play opposed to. No, it's not even that, that you know, course plays fast. Fox Hill plays extremely fast. It, it is because it is so. You know, you can <laughs> oh, really? so yeah. no yeah. depending on how much was your The biggest thing is, is where you get stuck with um, carpet and walking in the rain. That's the sort of thing. We were done at 515, but we played through a twosome that was slower than us. They said, Is there any reason you guys need to go faster? <laughs> and a meeting. Gotta go. And then a foursome let us play through, and it was a par three. And I just looked at my partner and I was like, let's just play through it. So we skipped all. So that's why we were, otherwise, I'd still be on a course because they were playing slower today. I've started to tell people expect slow golf, you won't be disappointed. Every time you go out and expect to play in this time frame, Every single time, you just play with your round. I mean, so you lose one awesome. ball, you're looking for it. That's. Yeah. You know. John knows they're all on these balls. <laughs> 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 um, what I was going to say, which was interesting, um, <coughs> playing today, I wasn't there when they went through the rules, but we talked about new players, people who aren't familiar with golf, or the ones who think it's, you know, you go out and drink. A taste of beer on the first half or the second half. Does anyone ever kind of, or is there kind of like a cheat sheet rules like the pace of play? Pace, pace yourself. Like so nine holes should be two hours. We have the pace of play card in all three golf courses. Um, it has etiquette on one side and the pace of play kind on the other side. And the USGA does amount of greatness every year. You know, sunset it's, it's rated at two and two now two hours and fifteen minutes <coughs> an hour case play. Now those cards are on the on the steering wheel of the golf cart. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. the it's got the ready golf, ready golf rules, tips, you know, and, yeah. and if you treat the fourth hole as the clock it says you should be here at one hour. Yeah. Yeah. And and there's there's, the there's are things that say what pieces. Yeah. And yeah. I, I just kinda of wondered uh, after uh, we staff and real beginners type of course shut down, what have you seen, I mean, primarily, I would think over at Sunset, in regards to this whole thing here? I, I, think, here too. I think it's been kind of split between here at Twin and at Sunset. I don't think you've gotten as many of the Haystack uh, kind of no. players. It's too long. Yeah, the first, well, it's further distance. Well, it's further distance, you know. Well, yeah, I know there's I a, lot, a lot of respect to that. that. That first week was kind of a, a educational period for a lot of players that only would play this guy. I mean, I had guys, I was there on Monday, it's my usual day that I'm not in 
the office, but uh, Bill Sullivan <laughs> literally had a full sheet of tea times, and these guys were just standing on the tea box and ready to hit. And he's like, I don't know who these guys are. And he went out there and they're like, yeah, we're just gonna tee off and come in and pay when we're done, let's do it ASAP. He's like, no, that's not how it works here. I can't I can't get out for a while to so hang out, I'll squeeze you in the sheet. That thing, but yeah, you, you still see it, but you know, it, everyone's it's not I don't have any clients. How, how long have they been out for? <coughs> Third year? Uh, Third year? Third year? Yeah. It was 2021. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So some of these questions where people were saying like you could have like <coughs> suggestion lists. Yeah. Like what's your favorite or what do you appreciate most? But you could also then be like, what was the thing that you didn't like about the course? And in case of play might be one of the choices under that instead of saying how do you feel about case of play? Because I'm not sure I would actually have a question I would ask for the name. But I mean, you always have an opening, like in the last thing saying, any opening to questions or comments. How, how are you distributed this through QR codes? And yeah, I think that would be the. So after we decide what the actual questions will be, we'll work with the comms team and they'll help us decide how that will take that. And then they'll actually help uh, us tally everything. Yeah, just one thought. You talk about shortening, which I agree with completely. And you might think about putting your questions in two different kinds of areas, and for lack of better terms, one survey might deal with course condition, which is one through seven on, on this survey sheet. Another one, for lack of a better term, might be course enjoyability which would be things like strong points, weak points, how do you feel about the pace of play, uh, any amenities you'd like to see, affordability, etc. Split it in those two areas and it would give you specific things you're looking for in each case. So how, how about if at our June meeting, we'll bring two samples for each one of the, of the surveys so that you can give your final yes or no, and then right after that, we'll be able to start getting it out. We'll work with the comms team to help fine tune the, the questions and how we ask them as well. I would say, yeah, and maybe uh, make the two surveys have two, set, two different sets of questions, about seven questions, and that's about it. Once you get past seven, people lose interest, and they're less likely to respond. Uh, if you only ask three or four questions, you're probably not getting a true story. Um, but again, especially the drop-down types of some things. If you can't complete it in five minutes, you're probably not going to get a good response. No. I would think that the um, like data of the week you play, the weather, those are just questions you need to know so you know what kind of what's going on. What was going on. <laughs> it's kind of your header. So you that's, know. Yeah, like yeah. part of your main. What's the main? Well, yeah, that looks like that's, that's a good idea. idea. Yeah. Because if it's rainy and it's cold or it's windy, it's Saturday versus Monday. Exactly. Yeah. And those again could all be dropped down at pick Monday through Sunday. Okay. Rainy, pick sunny, pick. But I would whatever. consider those part of the que number of questions. Those are like what's the yeah. you know, like Your conditions of say of yeah, the okay. All right, good feedback. I will, I will get that back to to you all at our for our junior meeting. You can do this all by yourself. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Dan is not here tonight, so she knows. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have no. Plus, we have our communication team within the city, and they will help us with this as well. So, you know, I end up playing with people I don't know a lot. And I always tell them on the board, and toward the end, 
of how your life is you like it. And I like I can tell you three things that I get time and time again. One, it's close by, two, the price is right, and three, it's easy to collect. That mean it is. And it doesn't matter what age, age group they are. I mean, I get that time and time again, and then the work that I'm on I get the problem with the, with the bathrooms, you know. <laughs> and here it was water. But, uh, <coughs> you know, they come from Erie, and they come from Italy, they come from Lalo. And, uh, yeah, not too many from Boulder, but most of all, I got from Boulder. But this is probably seen from the front here. Yeah, right, right, right. Yes, as a matter of fact, the flight's been so long. And, uh, but that's just sort of overall, I can tell you that, but, yeah. so somewhere in there, there ought to be somewhere where they can answer that kind of question. Anything else on survey? So the, the final thing is, uh, uh, item that Brian and I are dealing with, uh, where many people at Sunset are interested in having some type of memorial <coughs> at the golf course. And we are uh, working with four people right now that will ultimately give a bench on every one of the, the holes at the golf course. Wow. And so, we need to come up with some type of other ideas uh, where other benches and trees of how people can, um, you know, have have their loved one memorialized or recognized at the golf course. And just kind of wanted to get the board's feeling of, you know, do you have any suggestions on how we do that? One of the things that I would say is, you know, I, we, we certainly don't, want the golf course to become, you know, this downer place. I, I, I think we want to make sure that it's done well and and that you, you, you just, again, aren't, aren't overwhelmed with the sorrow in, in some cases. So, any thoughts? Yeah. So what if you were put up a flagstone wall, monument thing, and depending on how much they're donating as a memorial, there are different levels on that. So you can put a plaque honoring them that they're at a different level and you identify that as a header. Uh, you give $100 a year in some category, you give $500 a year in different categories. So there's different levels of patron, patron or whatever. How do you want to classify it? It's usually a one-time thing. I understand, that's why I said it's a, so, so if I, let's just say for example, <coughs> what you're suggesting is a thousand dollars for a bigger plaque, medium plaque. Not necessarily just different levels, and you call out the different levels, and so depending on where it is, is where they fall on that wall. So, a hundred dollar gets you on the, the entry level, whatever. Five hundred gets you on a, a patron level, and a thousand gets you on an executive level, or whatever you're going to call it. The bar where you need a one. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Exactly. So my, my question comes to like the so a bench, right? Adds the ability. I mean, it, it adds to the golf course. Yes. Someone's able to sit and we, you know, the pace of play is slow, kind of thing. But it adds. Is there something that would add to the golf course? You know, what they're trying to do is not necessarily bring it down. They're trying to give back. Yes. In honor, yes. so like I'm thinking water fountain, or you know, which may not be the case, but something that we add to it. And I hate to say I don't remember what each course looks like, but it's nice to you know when it spells out what the whole looks like for the people who probably played it. How you know all that stuff. I mean, I can imagine. Are you talking about the T stones? Or it shows that the T stones that we currently have, um, have they have uh, sponsors on them that purchased that stone. Okay. Uh, so, so, that's not so okay. yeah. sorry, kind of what you're saying, kind of going along with it when I was talking about the wall, that money that they're giving, maybe that's put into a fund and then that's used to 
upgrade something in the clubhouse so it's not just the money that they're giving and the plaque, but it's going to something, maybe some upgrade, maybe carts for people or whatever that help buy more handicapped carts or something that the course can use, something that would help signify for their remembrance of being at the course. Yeah. Not, not just, hey, we get, we get our name put on a plaque and that's it. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know that any of the courses need it, but like a bridge or just something that enhances the beauty of the course, the user's um, experience versus just making it some kind of stone that we put something on the back so. mm -hmm. Are you adding to those? No. Those were people that helped build or donated. Yeah, I don't know exactly. I don't remember what yeah. it was, but I, I remember seeing. Yeah. But there is. There's a whole. Yeah, there's some size. Some area to walk up to the nation. Yeah, it's something to help start it. Yeah. I don't remember exactly, but I mean, I moved here shortly after it was built, so I don't remember exactly. Anybody else have any thoughts? Just an aside. Uh, I'm on the OH HOV. And one of the things that we found out about the grant coming from the city of Long Island, one of the things we're going to get is a bitch. You will not believe it, but you go into trying to find a bitch. I think it is, and I know I, I wondered about that. It's really neat. I guess the only one we got on Sunset was at seven. Can't remember any others. You know, almost every we have a bench on every single hole, on except it. for on number four, and now there's one or two. Oh, maybe. Uh, yeah, well, so we have stone benches, like actual stone place benches. Yeah. So you're talking about yeah, the Fox Tunnel if we're oh. thinking like just like the movable benches. Well, well um, that's the other issue. Yeah, we don't Are they going to be movable or not movable? <laughs> yeah. 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 How you put a band down the line. And, yeah. and yeah. they're very sturdy. Oh, so yeah. They don't they move the kind of yeah. 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 How, What kind of letter you're going to have on it? Mm -hmm. like so. Yeah, it, the city has an approval process for that. Yeah. Oh. That has to, Jeff has to approve for those. Yeah. Like you said, you should sign up C, I don't know if yeah. right, it's a yeah. loving memory or yep. whatever. Do you guys have suggestions? The, only, the one that I mentioned, you know, at the end of on Homer 9, we finished the path that goes curves back up. Right. There's an open space there. I, I suggest maybe putting a sign there as a thank you message to the players that, that, that thanks for playing, but having that be used in the board of war. Um, I've had people suggest it in the brick, like they did you um, somehow, some way, but uh, it's really nowhere to add brakes. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree that we just consolidate it to one place because yeah. it's, otherwise you start to make it. How many benches can you use? You know, and it's <laughs> well, yeah. or trees yeah. or anything. Yeah. 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 Monuments and it's not. Just... Or if you put a stone marker somewhere that you know that uh, it's so it's so or whatever. Yeah. And you start yeah. running it. Yeah. 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 One of the biggest issues you run into potentially with putting plaques, say, out on the golf course. So, say someone wants to put uh, buy a two hundred yard marker plaque. And put it out there in loving memory of this and these 200 yards out with one play on the channel. Well, how are they going to see it without paying the play? Because if they walk out there during the course of business, then they're just interrupting play and possibly get hurt. So that's someone has mentioned that to me in the past. Um, people walk out to their benches? Yes. Yeah. Well, right now, especially when they're first. Put yeah, right now on number nine, uh, there's a bouquet of flowers laid out for Norma. Are relatively accessible and not the way to in the play area itself. 
Yes. Because they're usually by a street or yeah. one and out because of yeah. five yeah. or seven yeah. uh, a year. The only ones would be the inconvenient for six, right in the center, or for six. But you can drive down yeah. to there, but it's yeah. not terrible. Yeah. So, I mean, there are a lot that it's yeah. relatively short to walk to and from off the course. Yeah. Okay, good comments. Thank you. We'll uh, bring this back and give you what we found out that as we move through the year. I don't think there are any items from the staff. Okay. <laughs> so, any items from the board this evening? Well, obviously, so I really have enjoyed the feedback that you guys have. I, I think this board is uh, active, interested, and uh, I like the discussion. And I'm just happy to be here to support you and get plays on this back to the council. We have a meeting tomorrow uh, that we uh, talk ahead of time. It's a pre session, and uh, I think they're, they're always interested in finding out hey, the, you know, the irrigation system is working well. And, getting back on track and, and we've got some great numbers so far for a uh, number of rounds and everything so we're starting to, you know they like to hear that type of stuff and, they, and the fact that the uh, building is getting uh, put in I, a long time coming well i try i'm trying <laughs> What would be full capacity? Like, how many rounds do you put through the day? Well, per month. Or per month, or, yeah. On, the, on our T sheets, the T sheets are pretty um, kind of built. I don't need to say I mean, yeah, like 200. <coughs> I mean, 300 is a, is a huge um, day in Korea. Yeah. <laughs> It's on the day of the year, too, isn't it? Yes. Because you're not going to get that. You're going to get a long day, and I'll tell everybody how much sun I can have, you know, that's right. what I thought. But um, when I uh, worked at Apple and Golf Course back in 1988, 89, 90, we used to do over 60,000 around here, which is incredible. Every day was back. Right now, I, I feel like any 18 hole course that does 40,000. 42 to 45 is very, very good. And we're pushing out 45 number now. Yeah. So yeah, I think we're um, we're up there. It's, it's doing great. Well, my my question, of course, comes from my being back in flying and watching the capacity of like how fast. But there's only so much you can do. So I was just wondering, like, if you guys did. Well, since so we also talk about basic flying and mm -hmm. you know. Uh, yeah, one of the things we did during COVID to spread people out is we went to 10 minute uh, tea times. And we've kept that at the golf courses just because it's helped with the pace of play. And it gives the pros some flexibility that if something happens where we didn't get a, a, a round of recorded that they were coming, it gives them some flexibility to plug people in. But, I don't know that we would, we, we could build more capacity if we went back to seven or eight minute rounds, but there's problems that go along with. If, if we were building seven or eight minute rounds again, we would be, we would be pushing probably 40,000 rounds a year. We have a lot of pissed off customers too. Yeah, that was my, just my question is because it sounds like, I mean, weather's been favorable, so you guys are way up, but there's going to be a point where you hit. I mean, each, day, each day we're, we're fluctuating and adding to these times when we know we're at so, you know, On certain days, I'm, I'm running. My senior, the senior center that plays on, on uh, Friday mornings, I have them schedule their tea times on a separate, like they do their, their own tea times. I tell them to do eight minute intervals. I do 10 minute intervals on the tea sheet, but if you do eight minute intervals, I can still work it in there and that's still in my head usually before my first group of public for their designated end time for their group. It just allows certain days where I can push more and other days, weekends usually I can uh, 
that in any show up. It's definitely a much better player experience than Tim and Tina Bowls. <clears throat> but at 10 o'clock on a Saturday, you know, you're going to show up, you got a 20 minute gap now okay. that you could have booked that time 20 times over. So those are the bummers. Every now and then we'll, we'll, we'll probably squeeze in here and there to kind of offset those no shows. It's never a problem. As we, if we ever get to the point where capacity, it becomes an issue, I think one of the things we would consider is you need to prepay. If you're a no-show, you don't get all your money back. But I think we're close to being ready to do that. But that's one of the things that prevents some of the things that uh, Sam just described. Uh, they're, they're not an issue. Well, well shows. those shows used to be a huge issue. Yes. But so, yeah. now we do a lot of prepays. People who book online, they're prepaid. And when they call in, they need a credit card number. So that just scares them enough that they call and cancel it. So that problem has gotten a lot better than it used to be. But we still get a few now and then, and um, we're going to find it. Like you book a hotel or an airline, you know, hey, sorry. And it's kind of funny that the golf is not excused. <laughs> that's a cultural thing. You tell. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's there's a, a that's a, a sometimes a generational thing too, I think. Yeah. Well, I think that it's being more accepted than if you signed up, you're going to lose something. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I agree that. I don't know that you want to take the whole green fee, but there should be some $15 fee or whatever that you're helping to cover for lack of consideration. You took a time and some of those could be. We refund people that pre-book or they cancel, we, we refund every time, no questions asked, even as the day of. Yeah. Somebody right. pre-pays for four, two show up, give them a refund. Yeah. Refund the two. The, the time where we have issues is when people select the, the hot time, which is the Golf Now discount, and Golf Now collects it, and we don't get that money. Sometimes people have had difficulty getting that right if the weather's bad. <clears throat> yeah, they golf down the house pretty, uh, pretty hard line on those. Mm -hmm. They make it perfectly clear these are non refundable Correct. as they go through the whole checkout process. Um, so they they expect it. Absolutely. Uh, unfortunately, I want that. No, no, no I, I, I mean, I've done some of those. I want those calls that as well. Week. So I know that, yeah, if, if I book it as a hot deal. It's not refundable and don't expect to see the money if you decide not to show up. Right. Unless it's weather conducive and then they see the course has to keep it perfect. Exactly. It's, it's a little bit different, but no, that's that's the fair answer. Yep. It's, it should be just real easy for everybody to get money back just because I didn't feel like showing up. Right. Paul, were you going to say something? Uh, no. Nope. Uh, make a motion to be Thanks, man. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.